My life is pretty different than the last time we spoke. The elephant in the room is that uh, Kelsey and I are no longer together. And I know that ultimately I don't have control over what people are going to say in response, but I would just like to state my preference in that there be no, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, or anything really. It happened about a month ago and the transition process has been truly devastatingly painful and traumatic and I would really just like to move on, put this in the past, and think about it as little as possible. This last month has been truly awful. I legitimately would rather sit through my own mother's funeral a thousand times over again before experiencing anything like this last four weeks has been. So for my own mental health, I would really just like to put it in my rearview mirror. It is embarrassing to have to come forward with this news, I guess, right on the heels of uploading that video about I'm polyamorous, lol. The one point that I want to make in that context is that in the same way that when a monogamous couple breaks up, we don't look at that as evidence that monogamy in general is bad, I would implore you to not look at this as an example of polyamory being bad in general. Relationships of all shapes and sizes end for a multitude of reasons all of the time. So if you're sitting there ready to type out, ha ha, I knew this polyamory thing wasn't gonna work out. I would implore you to not, and to reflect on uh, the fact that you weren't there, and that probably even those of us who were there don't fully understand all of what went wrong and how. And probably, no one of us will ever totally understand the whole picture. So I guess that is the biggest part of what has changed in my life. I am still dating Amanda, and she and I have moved to Houston, Texas. Technically League City, which is a suburb of Houston, I guess. Amanda is a flight attendant for Southwest Airlines, so she needs to live within reasonable driving distance of one of Southwest's bases, they call them. So we looked at every base in the United States, did the math on which one would afford us the lowest cost of living, because we are both very broke, and the winner was Houston. I can't say I've been particularly attracted to living in Texas before. I still don't feel particularly attracted to living in Texas, but financially, this is the best move. So I got the keys to this place like two or three days ago now. Amanda hasn't been here yet at all. Um, she's currently flying in. Uh, she lands in about an hour and she's gonna see the apartment for the first time. Maybe you guys will see her for the first time. I say maybe because she's like actually legitimately maybe one of the most camera shy people that I've ever met in my life. So I guess it's just kind of a, a cruel twist of fate for her that she's ended up dating a very camera oriented person. So we'll have to feel that situation out. I of course don't want to make her feel uncomfortable or force her to be on camera or on the internet in ways that she doesn't want to be. So. We'll just see how that goes, I guess. Anyway, we have very little furniture here. We have very little in our bank accounts. And in a lot of ways, it feels like starting life over again, which honestly feels kind of nice. I feel free to make my life into what I want it to be in ways that I haven't felt in a long time. But I am 
starting at near ground zero. So it's going to be a bit of a slog for a little bit. Yesterday I applied to jobs at um, Taco Bell, Cracker Barrel, Waffle House, Wendy's, uh, McDonald's, and Starbucks. It's a good handful of places that are within walking distance because I don't have a car. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you guys, I don't have a car anymore. The last time I had a SciShow shoot up in Montana, I drove up there to do the shoot, and when I was driving back down to Denver, I hit some black ice on the freeway and spun off the side of the road, rolled the car 1.5 times, landed on the roof. Let me tell you that uh, seat belts are a really good invention. And also, it's really impressive that the pillars in a vehicle can allow the roof to hold up the entire weight of the vehicle without crushing you inside the cab. So be thankful to all of the engineers who put work into making it so that you can fly off the road at 70 miles an hour and not be dead. My main source of income for a long time was delivering for Uber Eats, so suddenly not having a car as of, that was like the end of March, beginning of April, sucked. And like trying to find a car to buy when you are poor also sucks. It seems like anything that's under $5,000 is actually garbage. Like there were vehicles going for $4,000, $4,500 that actually had no engine. And then stuff that's from say $5,000 to $7,000 is old enough and has enough mileage on it that there's gonna be a transmission replacement necessary in the next however many months probably, and that by itself can cost three or four thousand dollars. So you might as well consider a six thousand dollar car to be like a ten thousand dollar car, and it's not even in my budget to pay five thousand dollars for a car in the first place, so... <sighs> kind of makes you wish that the United States wasn't so car-centric, doesn't it? But <laughs> it is, so I probably need to get myself a car in the next handful of months. Anyway, I think those are the big main life updates. This is a whole new chapter of my life. <laughs> here we go. Uh, I'm gonna get ready to meet Amanda when she gets here and um, maybe I'll give you guys a little apartment tour when she does. Okay then. Much quieter with the door closed. Hi. 
How do you like it? I like it. It's cute. You're cute. You're cute. <laughs> How do you like it? I don't know if I would use the word significantly. It is um, at least notably better than I was expecting it to be when I arrived for the price that we're paying. Yeah. Are you pleased with this bed situation? Don't look at the part where I spilled McDonald's hot mustard sauce onto the bed immediately after we bought it. The placement of this mirror is such that I can't see myself in it. <laughs> that sucks. I'm happy to have a place with you. It's nice. Just two young adult sims. Whoa, in a haunted house. <laughs> I guess when the air conditioning turns on, it sucks the door closed. But you know, in The Sims, they start off with 20,000 simoleons. It's f***ed up. Where's mine? Yeah, I don't think we have 20,000 simoleons. You know, since we're both broke, maybe we should start an OnlyFans. You wanna make porn? I'm trying to decide how much money I would need to know that I was going to make to make me feel okay with posting our porn in a public location. How are we fine with, like, an additional 50000 a year? 50000 a year? I feel like I would need to have it guaranteed somehow that me posting porn of me slash us would increase my net worth by at least $1 million for me to be like, that seems worth it. Porn is such a momentary thing, you know? So if it gave me $50,000 additional in a year, that's a lot. I don't think that's enough for me. I'd need to feel like it had mostly set me up for life if um, I'm smart about managing the money. I would also be okay with 100000 Would you be okay with a million? I just don't think that's realistic. There's so many people in the fans. What are you offering that someone else isn't already offering? I'm offering that... I'm that one guy from SciShow. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> you are offering something to what else is. And I wonder if that would increase SciShow viewership. Oh, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I love you.